How's it going guys? So a couple days ago, or it might even be a couple weeks ago now, I made a video analyzing a tech house track and I promised that I would make a track based off of that. I would produce a track based off that analysis. And so that's what this video is. I'm going to start with the busiest section, the biggest section, the climax of the song, the drop, and then I'm going to work into the break and the build. And then I'm going to make sure that my drop, my break section, and the build section cycle well because that's really what the whole song is. It's just working up to that point and then deconstructing from beyond that point. And so I'm going to make sure that the core of the song sounds good and legit and I'm good to go from there. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with drums, MIDI track, get some uh, drum rack going on. And this process is going to be pretty um, obvious and simple because all I'm going to do is try to find drum sounds that sound kind of like the ones in the reference track so that I can see how they're using sounds together that work. And maybe I can learn something that I'm going to take away. And I'm going to choose a couple different sounds for each sound. So I'll choose like four to eight kick drums and a lot of open hats, closed hats, snares, claps, because I want to find sounds that ultimately are going to work together. And um, the sounds also that I like as well. So that's what's going on. And let's just start. So pretty simple kick, not a lot of top end. It's just got a little bit of transient, probably in the 1K, 1.5K range and a sub, just leaving a lot of uh, space for the other things. Um, just for fun, I'll show you this little technique. So if I come to the outro, this is where you're typically just gonna have the kick without bass. So if I put an EQ on here and I just EQ out the low end, or not EQ out, but just EQ the top end down, I can come and see what the low end uh, looks like in a kick. All right, so immediately I know a couple things. I know that on the strong beats, which are the one and the three, the odd beats in a bar, that the kick has a bit of a low end transient. But when the, on the, on the uh, weak beats, on the two and the four, the transient of the kick is taken away because they're making room for the kick or for the clap or for the snare. I'm also able to see that the kick is an eighth note long because here we are have a rate of a quarter note and the kick is half that, just a, with a little bit extra. Also able to see the dynamic envelope of the low end, at least everything below 150. Let's go to 300. Even below 300, it is not much changing in the envelope. It's just a little bit of a, a barely attack and then it just kind of scoops down and up and then back down. And so just looking at what the envelope of the kick looks like allows me to kind of make a judgment on what kick I'm gonna use in a way that the kick's gonna function similar to the way that it does in the reference track. And yeah, as you can see, the, pit, the kick doesn't pitch very much either. either. Um, Sometimes you'll have more spaces between these lines, which means that the pitch is changing. But this looks pretty uniform starting around like right here. So if I come and look at the spectrum analyzer, I shouldn't see a lot of downward movement. It should be a pretty static frequency down at the bottom. 
So a little bit of downward movement, but then it really just kind of hangs out right here. And I can see in the lower left hand corner that this kick is, is the pitch is F sharp. All right, so if I really want to stick close to the reference, I'll choose a kick. As you can see how much you can analyze with this stuff, but I'll choose a kick that's F sharp with these uh, dynamic characteristics. All right, anyway, but I don't want to get bogged down in details. I really just want to throw this together and just make something fairly quickly. So I'm going to try to avoid doing too much analysis and too much detailed work. Let's just start trying to find some sounds that work and let's make sure that this is off. It's all right. And I'm just going to go ahead and just choose uh, vengeance sounds for now because they already sound good. So those kicks already have some top end. But our track doesn't have that much top. I can always filter that down though. pretty close so let's go ahead and throw this guy in there and I'm gonna go find a couple more kicks all right so I got some kicks together let's go ahead and listen through them change this to quarter notes cool all right so that one's good. I like that one. I'm going to keep him and go like this. Actually, for fun, let's throw the LFO tool on here and look at the dynamic characteristic. So that's not that bad. Let's go ahead and mute that guy. Kind of like that one, too. Nope. Let's see. That was pretty cool. Nope. And let's see. Nope. All right, so it looks like we just have uh, all these guys. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I don't like that one. That one's not bad. That was not bad. A little bit of a top. It's got a nice grungy sound to it. Um, all right, let's see what key these guys are. So go ahead and get the spectrum analyzer. You can see this one looks a lot like the other kick. Okay. Let's try. Just got a little bit more grit and character. So as you can see, again, it's, it's, it has a big spike. It doesn't do a lot of movement down, a lot of down pitch. So this one is G. So kick G. So, you know what? I'm not sure which of those I'm going to use yet. So what we're going to do is go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and grab some claps. So let's check this out. Okay, some claps. Let's go back to Vengeance. And we'll go ahead and look for some claps. Let's turn this guy down a little bit. You get the idea. All right, I got some claps here now. Let's uh, put them on the two and the four. Let's go ahead and actually play them with the reference.
and I'm looking for a stereo clap. It's a little too harsh, a little too much high end. That's very live sounding. That's also live sounding. And there's this very drum sounding, very drum machine. All right, so I'm not gonna use this one. That's a nice clap. So was that. And all right, so I'll use one of these two. So we have our drums, we have the two claps that I can use. Now let's go ahead and move on to um, the uh, hi-hat. Let's see what they're doing with that. All right, so at the front of the mix here, they have the hats. So let's go ahead and move this guy over here. It's a good place I can see on the arrangement that they have this hi-hat harsh coming. Like that, just a closed hat with a really aggressive uh, mid-range. And then they have the open hat come in right around here. So let's get that open, let's get, uh, try to find some hat sounds. All right, we have some hi-hats now. Let's uh, can make sure we have the right ones. All right, so that one's phasing with the original, so we'll keep that one. That one's not as like crispy as the original, but I like that one. It's a little too aggressive, I think. That was really cool. But I think that we just wanted to play a very simple part, so. All right, so we have a couple hi-hats to choose from, a couple kicks, a couple claps. Let's go after that one kind of harsher sound over here. That kick, 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 that really distorted uh, closed hat. So, you know the drill. All right, let's get some of these closed hats going. Nice and aggressive. Probably shorten that one down, that might work. That one's nice. A nice aggressive quality to it. Not quite. That one's cool, it sounds really uh, lo fi. So does that one. Dang, that one's cool too. Shit. I got a lot of flavors to choose from here. Damn, that one's that one might be the winner. So definitely the top one over that one. Yep, that one's gone. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. All right, now that I've chosen a little palette of sounds, what I'm gonna do is turn all the sounds on, make sure the track is off, and, um, okay, cool. Now I'm just gonna delete the ones that I'm not gonna be using. And so I can see which ones I am using. So I'm not using that, I'll delete that guy. I'll just go ahead and delete all the ones I'm not using. All right, so now let's just start mixing and matching.
All right, so narrow down some of the drum elements. All right, so now we're just left with the sounds that I want to use. Next thing I'm going to do is move these to their own tracks. So start with a kick. Here we are. Let's just move this simpler instrument over here, and I'll do the same thing for the rest of the sounds. All right, so I separated all of these drum elements out, and here we are. Not too bad now, I need to get some kind of like shaker. All right, let's see where the shaker comes in. Shaker comes in over here. So we're not gonna have, we're gonna have a difficult time hearing it no matter where. So it doesn't really matter, let's just go find a shaker part. All right, I was trying to find some shaker loops and I found a couple that might work. So let's try them out. So let's see. Okay, I definitely want to get rid of the clap there because we already have our claps. So let's take that clap down. Okay, there's a weird thing. There's a, a little bass part over here. So let's just loop around this section. And you know what? Let's try doing this. So I'll take this guy and I'll take this. I'll combine them and then I will And try this. Just push that out. Now we just have like a little shaker part. And of course that little sound in there is really cool. So that's pretty good. Now let's keep going. Now I really like the syncopation in So let's do the exact same thing actually. So we'll take the front here. Let's figure out what's going on. So actually let's move this guy first. Even though it's like a little bongo part. Could have him go over the kick. And then here. And let's take this last one. Like this. So that has a really nice groove to it. Um, let's try switching this around just a bit like the original loop had it. I think like this. Oh, that's tough. So what I'm going to do is not decide right now. Another way I could figure that out is just by moving this guy around. So there we go. I was like, what the heck's going on? All right, that's kind of cool. What I'm thinking though instead is Instead of having this little bongo whatever hit every single time, let's just have it hit on the downbeat. So let's see what this does.
puts a little bit of emphasis on the clap, so that's pretty cool. Let's uh, get rid of this. And zoom that guy out. All right, let's move on, see what we have here. All right, so I must have liked, I think I like that sound. So let's And so here's a nice little section I think that we can loop. I didn't loop the right section. That's okay. All right, so now we have one with a little more top end. Let's just bring down the... All right, so we got our different loops. Just loop this right here. All right, so this is about getting the groove right. Actually, it feels better without that loop at all. So let's just get rid of this, get rid of this. And it sounds cleaner without the little accent on the strong beats too, so. So we have a shaker one, and we have a perk loop one. And so let's go ahead and go like that. I think that's cool. I think that this percussion loop gives the loop a lot of character. I think we could turn that low clap down a little. So they have much more saturated sounds. So as you can see, like in the process of trying to imitate them, you're gonna deviate a little bit. But at the, at the start, I didn't wanna be do exactly what they're doing. I'm just using their track as kind of an inspiration. But one thing I'm definitely keeping in mind right now is how the sounds are mixed. So if I listen to this, if I listen to their track, the claps are, are wide. The kick is coming down the middle, and then what's the open hat? The open hat is coming down the middle. It's probably just a little bit panned to the right, and then the two open hats, or the two closed hats, or actually it's just one closed hat, sorry, is wide like it is in the intro. So you can see in the beginning, the only drum element that's really coming down the middle right now is the kick. The closed hat is wide, and then the claps are wide. And that actually creates a little bit of tension that gets released when we have that high-end information come through the middle with the open hat, uh, which is right here. So if we loop this section right here, you can see a little bit of tension being released, at least uh, tension being created in the stereo image. It's just a little bit of a release to get that strength coming down from the, coming down the middle from both the the low end and the top end, and then having the claps wide like that is going to allow us to have a lot more interesting things happen down the middle of the mix, uh, which is ultimately just going to be the bass line. Mm -hmm. 
You can hear how the bass there has a lot of the low end and a lot of kind of low mids almost, and then it has a nice attack in the mid range. All right, and let's go find a little ride symbol for now, just because we're working on the main section of the drop, so they have that there. Let's go find some ride sounds. So I was literally recording for the last 37 minutes, just got back from dinner, and I realized that Camtasia was not running. So that sucks, but not too much happened. So let me just go over what's going on here. I um, think I was last working on the rides before this happened. And so let me show you what's going on here. It's nice, um, this one. All right, and together. All right, and then um, what else? I added a um, another open hat underneath our existing one. So just to give it some low end weight. I also did, I showed you this trick where I like to do where I like to pan hard pan something and see where see the find the level where it doesn't isn't as obnoxious and then that's typically the level where I like to keep it's a little too obnoxious that's nice and subtle so just adds a nice little weight another thing I did was add this little syncopated hit um, before the second downbeat Play that for you. Okay, um, and basically what I have is a, a little folder here of different syncopated hits that I like and sampled. And so that's that was the best one that I found. Nothing too much there. Another thing that I did was get a 909 hat. Okay, and so I'm using Drumazon here, which is a 909 emulation. And I was explaining that, I, well I wasn't really explaining it, I mentioned that, um, I love uh, obviously using 909 sounds, but I find programming the same kind of drum sounds over and over with something like this is kind of boring. And that's why I like looking for samples because I like when I'm surprised by something. If I'm surprised by something, then I feel like I'll just have more energy working because I'll be like, ooh, that's cool, ooh, that's cool. And I feel like other people might feel that way too, but who knows. And so, but what I did for a, a simple part like this, was I just used the 909 because it's clean, it's it's gonna serve its function. And what I also did was group the instrument and then I set up macro controls just for the controls in the closed hat, which is the level, the tune, and the decay. And I just found the right tuning and I was making sure that it worked with the percussion loop and the shaker loop. And so they're more friendly, they need to become even better friends, but it'll do for now. Um, another thing is that I swung this hi-hat, as you can see. Uh, a swing is literally where you just take the uh, even subdivisions. Uh, typically in a house track, those are going to be 16th notes. That's going to be like your smallest subdivision. And um, you just delay them a little bit. So here's the even subdivisions, the 16ths, and you just give them a little bit of delay. Now I, f I wanted, like I said, the percussion loop and the closed hat to be friends. So what I did is I figured out the swing on the percussion loop because that's really giving the most amount of groove to this uh, drum groove. And so the way I figured it out is I just kind of zoom in until I see about where the starting point of that hit is. And it's a six, and it's one one twenty eighth note away from the sixteenth. So if I go like this, you'll see. Okay, well here's a, here's the sixteenth note, uh, the start of the second 16th note in the bar. And so how far is this delayed? Well, this, this little strike is delayed by a 128th note. And so that's what I did. I came over here to the closed hats and here you can see the grid on the bottom right is 128th note. So all I did was take this, select these two notes and go like this. And now they are swung. So before, 
Let me play it with these guys, actually. Okay, and then when I swing them, before, after. All right, so that's the difference. That's a uh, swung hat. I think that's pretty much it. Other than that, everything you're seeing, uh, things have moved around. It's been, um, what's it called, uh, organizational. All I did was take what was up here and I moved it down here underneath their counterparts that I found in the analysis in the last video. And so now the next ingredients are gonna be the bass and the vocal. I gotta find a, a good bass patch or program one or, and then I also have to find a cool vocal. All right, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning of the video or not, but I tried to make a track using this as a reference before. And uh, I failed miserably because I spent too much time on the details. Like I spent four hours trying to get the bass sound right, I spent four hours getting the vocal right, and that's why I'm adamant this time to not get into the details. But I did find a vocal that I liked. So, so I am gonna use them because it'll save time. And they're not the coolest vocal in the world, but I found it and I'm gonna stick with it. So, let's see. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. All right, let's check it out. So first thing we gotta do is make sure this guy is in time. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. Freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. All right, that's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and consolidate this. Just get it a little bit more on time. It's that freaky. So that is supposed to be up there. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. It's that freaky shit. Let's see if we can get this. It's that freaky shit. Just kind of mimic the vocal and arrangement. The track. So it just happens at the end here. Blow up the. Another thing that I did was I wanted to have this this little vocal here. Let's turn off the warp. Dirty sexy freak girl. Dirty sexy freak girl. Dirty freak. Dirty freak. Dirty sexy freak girl. All right, this freak. Maybe I could use that as my other vocal too. Um, but that's gonna go right here. Let's get these lined up properly. All right, so 
And I also wanted to add a little delay on there. So very quickly. semi in the right direction here although I guess I could just use Ableton's it's actually probably gonna be cleaner they seem to have some kind of like ensemble effect on there or I don't know if the sample just had a lot of voices duplicate this really quick and just see if having both of them is a cool idea. This one's minus one semitones, then maybe dropping this by six will be okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Because that that's going to be a uh, going down by a fourth, or it's going to be the lower fifth. low actually let's do uh, freaky shit high freaky shit low and freak all right so okay there we go Chop it off at the 16th. Um, and next thing is uh, baseline. Uh, 
one thing to notice is that if I say the vocal over their bass line, it kind of mimics it. Blow whoop da bam bam. See if I could do something similar to my vocal. So I keep on hearing this dun 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 So let's try messing around with that. Um dun 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 So start with massive so I, oh we're in the key of G, so let's see. So if we listen to their bass line, let's give it a little quick listen. It kind of mimics what the vocal's doing. Blow up the speaker. Blow up speakers. <laughs> Blow up the speakers. Blow up the speakers. Blow up the speakers. I mean, in a way, you can kind of fit the vocal. I might just be going crazy, but... So I just want to see if I could use the vocal line that I have to kind of inspire something like that. So. It's that freaky shit. Da, 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 da. Ba, da, ba, 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 ba. So that vocal has a little motif. Ba, da, 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 da. Ba, da, 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 da. And so, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. what if I use that little motif somehow with the bass line? So. Ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Ba, da, ba, you see what I mean? Just using the, seeing what we could do with the motif. And uh, so I'm going to jam out a little bit here. And the my favorite bass synth, I guess synth, would be Trillion. Because it just has amazing sounds. And sometimes I'll use it. Sometimes I'll um, use the patch that I find or uh, sometimes not, but uh, this track is using uh, using a Sawtooth 303 bass. So let's try to find that 303. <laughs> That's cool, but I want to get rid of that stupid delay on it. Jeez. So let's just go jam out a little bit. I already forgot the vocal motif. Is that freaky shit? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Don't. Maybe I'll actually program this like a, a TB303, although I don't... 
have the accents or the slide. We only need this much. Swing these so. I'm not sure why that's happening. All right, so I tried making something in Trillion. I tried making making something in a 303 emulation, but I'm just gonna use Massive for crying out loud. Something super simple. Let's just make it really easy. Um, on the push, I need to change the scale to, let's just do G minor. It's that freaky sh Is that freakish? 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 Okay, those are kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Is that freakish? 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 this more TB three oh three
it. So uh, I've done en enough messing around with the sound design. I'm just gonna move on. Just wanna get the side chain right really quick. And the way I'm gonna do that is play the kick and the bass together and make sure that the, the master limiter is not activated. All right, so we can see a little bit of activation there. That means that um, the kick and the bass when adding together is crossing the zero threshold. And so the limiter is activating. So all I need to do is adjust the side chain here. Until that doesn't happen, but it looks like the actual reason why that's going on is because Massive is clipping. So let me just throw a clipper on here and I'll just use the glue compressor. And I'll just turn this soft clip on. And that's not causing the uh, limiter to activate over here. Really, really quick, I'm gonna throw something on here just to see if I can tame the um, bass just a tad. Actually sounds better when I increase the depth all the way. This feels pretty good. I'm just trying to get the right feel for the side chain. And one last thing I want to do, just see, just because I'm starting to feel the groove a little bit, is I want to throw a compressor on here and side chain compress to the kick. So let's go ahead and do kick. Um, let's capitalize this one. There you go, um, and we're just going to choose kick. I just like to use this compressor after uh, the LFO tool. The LFO tool is really doing a technical job, uh, but at the same time trying to create the right um, sidechain vibe. But the reason why I like to throw a compressor after the LFO tool is to give the actual imprint of the kick dynamics onto the bass. And so it feels like the bass is responding to the kick because it is responding to the kick. It's um, just a little bit, but enough to give, in my opinion, a better 
uh, feel of the group. Let's just call this base for now. And that's going to be it for me tonight. I'm going to open this up and start working on just filling out this uh, 16 bars right here. <laughs> See, got to fill that out. So let's extend this out. Let's extend everything out. A couple things I added to the synth really quick was a pitch bend down 24 dBs, not 24 dBs, 24 uh, semitones, so two octaves. And um, this is an envelope, just really fast decay. And I just put it on there and 24. Um, semitones so two octaves just pitching down and I added a little bit of white noise uh, white noise color all the way up amp just a little bit down and I also added this uh, insert clip which just gives it a little bit more edge so before and after and yes massive is clipping it's also clipping the clipper but it sounds cool. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, extending everything out over 16 bars and just working to get this 16 bars uh, pretty solid before I move into the break and the build. All right, moving on, let's get um, another vocal here. Because we can see in the reference. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, let's see if we can mess around with this vocal. So I'm hearing that, that could be Dirty, sexy, freak. And instead of, having, instead of having this girl, I want to have like some kind of like vocal breath. Uh -huh. Shall I proceed? Yes, indeed. I'm with the sexy freak. Gotcha. 
if I copied what's going on there? Stick to the plan. That's kind of cool. I'll just throw that in. Hot, but it's a little too boring a little too predictable so I'm gonna try something I was trying a couple things but let's go over to glitch and we're gonna initialize and we're gonna use the tape stop
That'll do for now. And I'm just going to automate this on and off. And just to automate this on and off, let's come over here and just... So the next thing to start on then would be the music. Which it seems there is just a little... Interesting sound. And then we have these... Uh, resi plucks. It's all right. So let's try to make those. So. So I think those are sixteenth notes. Let's try this out. It's all right. Actually sounds more like a sample that's being pitched down. It's all right. Um let's see if we could do something similar to that where I find a sample that kind of works in um like over these over these sixteenth notes and then I could pitch it down. So da -da 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 So let's do that kind of exponential type envelope. Get a little curve. Something like this. And let's just look up some effects. Maybe something like that, that could be cool. <clears throat> Let's get a spectrum analyzer, see where that's sitting. Spectrum. And what we need to do actually is change the MIDI. Go back to envelopes and make sure it reaches the bottom right here. Like that. Jesus. It's all right. Let's go to Echo Boy. <clears throat> Thank you. 
see if we can find some kind of like fill to go right there. Sounds of cashmere fills. 128. That's kind of cool. Bra, ba. So let's put that over here. We gotta put a uh, filter on that. I mean, how could you not? Just silly not to. that works but we'll keep it for now uh, I don't think these are quite in the right key yet but wow I don't even know what the fuck to call that some kind of Perk effect, I guess. Some like stutter, stutter air, stutter perk. There you go. Descriptive titles. All right, starting to sound pretty cool. Now we need to get uh, something that resembles. It's all right. Bow, bow, bow. It's kind of like what the fill is doing, so maybe we can mess around with how the fill is accenting the bar. So I found this wub sound. Let's see, the BPM is 126, and I need to subtract it by an eighth note. So minus an eighth note, let's get this right here. Spectrum analyzer in here.
So this is playing uh, E flat to D. So let's see, E flat to to D. So what we need to do then is find a third relationship in the uh, F minor scale, and then we'll pitch this up accordingly. So E flat to D. There's a third relation, there a, a, a half note relationship between, um, let's see, G flat and or um, uh, A flat and G. So A flat and G. That's going to be stretched out quite a bit. Um, where's another one? So in F, we're going to also have one at the fifth and the sixth. So we're going to have a D flat and a C. So that's makes more sense. So we need to detune this from E flat down to D flat. Okay, let's make sure that that works over the bass. Oh, this is, oh, we're in freaking G. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, uh, so the third relationship is going to be in the three and the two. So we're going to have a. Um, oh, well, actually, the original pitch is in key. It's going to go from the three to the from the six to the five, because it's going from E flat to D. That's going from the minor six to the five. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> duplicate this across and now we need a square stutter um, now we need ostinato bass octaves because that's during the break and what we need now is a string sound and so let's just go get the M1 high string there we go and go to browser and we'll go to strings and we'll go get the high string there it is cool and we'll go ahead and go to notes and we're in the key of G which I thought we were in the key of F earlier we're in the key of G so we're gonna play a D because that's the fifth <laughs> There's other string sounds, um, and I want to see. Let's see if those will work as well. So, loop. Those two work, so let's just uh,
So let's increase this. I want that kind of intense thing to happen at the third bar. So what I'm going to do is copy the string increases in intensity. So I want to copy that over here and then let's bring this one actually. So this is string uh, legato and this is string all right so last couple things we need a vinyl loop and so like these different vinyls have different amounts of like crackle so i'm just trying to see which one works it doesn't even fucking matter uh, so let's just add this vinyl in and one thing i like to do though is to unwarp it uh and then rewarp it and then loop it because now it's gonna a not loop according to the grid so that's always fun So this part over here needed a lot of cleaning up because it was kind of confusing on what what the flow was between all the parts. So I needed the Freak Freak to come through with this uh, hit, so I needed to cut away the, the end of the wub here. So, so before each of these little downbeats, I needed, or these little beats, I needed to have the wub doing the part and then accent after those parts, accent the beats with uh, this freak freak thing and then have one of the drum hits from the drum fill. And then after this swelling into this little beat, we have the uh, the vocal moan Elisa, the moan, and then we have uh, this beat. So every single time on these two beats right here we have a vocal landing preceded by a little wub swell so it it just makes it's it's a lot simpler it makes much more sense if that makes any sense so if I kind of solo these 
we'll see the the ordering dirty sexy freak dirty sexy freak dirty sexy freak dirty That's starting to sound pretty good to me. Uh, I'm gonna turn the volume back up, so be careful. All right, cool. So next thing I wanna do is, uh, there's a little percussion part lift that comes along with the ride that I talked about the analysis. It's all right. You can hear it right here, bup bup. So I want to add something like that in here. I just have to find where the space is going to allow for it. And so let's listen where there is some And then let's just go ahead and go through some uh, percussion loops. And just wait to be surprised. I'll see. And what I'm going to do is turn the master down, just so I can hear these a little bit better. I like that. Check this out. So, um, da, da, da. I just like those three little hits right here. Da, da, da. See, it just accents the da, da, da. That's really cool accents though that bass part but let's make sure that these are on time with the bass so um, let's come in here with the 16th so these are exactly on the grid so what we're gonna do is just change them up a little bit I'm not sure if these are exactly the same part so I'm too lazy to figure out if they're exactly the same. They might sound the same if there's a little difference, then awesome. But let's make sure we're at 128, and then we'll come in here and chop the end off. Come in here, chop the end off. All right, there we go. And we'll do the same thing over here, just making sure that that transient has the right swing. All right, so there we go. And I'm deleting two now, because I'm at a 1, 256 note. All right, so now these things are swinging properly. And so let's uh, go ahead and consolidate this. And we'll move it over here. We will loop it. And loop it. And let's just see what the pitches are on this guy. So let's come over to the Spectrum Analyzer. C sharp and E, which is gonna be a C sharp uh, minor. And so all we have to do, if we wanna put this in key, since we're in the key of G, instead of C sharp minor, we need to move, make it D minor. So we just need to move this up by a semitone. So right there, and now when we look, it's gonna be uh, D and F. So here's D and there is F. For the drop, right now we have most of the ingredients, and this is the big part of the song, so it really is about constructing up to this point and deconstructing, but now we need to work on the break. All right, so I was really stupid to delete those guide tracks that I um, made from the analysis video. So, 
instead of just recreating them, what I've done is I've taken a screenshot of the session. And so I'll use this uh, to help me flush out the arrangement because that's the whole point is to mimic the arrangement and mimic the structure of the song so that I can learn uh, something from that. All right, so as you can see, I fleshed out the arrangement. I know earlier I said I like to work on getting the break in the build, right? But now that I have most of the ingredients, I just flush the arrangement out based on the, this picture that I took, which is re really silly of me to do that. But, um, but yes, what I'm still gonna do is just work on this section and make sure that it cycles right, because that's gonna determine the level of everything before I start fine adjusting all the little automations and levels across the entire song. So I just want to make sure that this little section loops properly and then um, just go from there. All right, let's start getting some of these edits down here. We need a crash. Let's go find a crash. All right, so I have a number of crashes here. Let's do what we've done and just figure out the best one for the track. All right, so 30 minutes later, I found the right one and pitched it up a semitone. There it is. Let's just go ahead and uh, bounce that down. So, do do We got a crash now, that's exciting. I think it'd be cool if I cut this out and so it just goes into that freak with a long feedback. All right, so just cleaning up the vocals. Also in the reference track here, they don't have any, very many vocals going on in the first half of the 16 bars at the end of the drop. And then um, the vocals kind of get a little more exciting towards the end, which makes sense. Reaching, uh, going towards that climax. And so again, I just want to figure out this uh, syncopated hit here. I don't know if I want to keep it or replace it. So I might just mess around and find some other potential candidates. And it's actually just come in here and we're going to go to notes 16th and just got to draw it in right here. Of course, we got to zoom in and put it on the right swing value, which is a 128th note. There we go. So now I'm just going to look for some candidates here. So this one seems to work pretty well. Just pitched it down a little. I just want to get these guys in the same ballpark. 
And actually, what I might as well do is group them. So let's just do uh, Cinco 2. And let's just group these. So Cinco. And what I'm going to do is take the LFO tool, put it on here. And let's just shorten this hit a little bit. Let's go down to an eighth note. And so we're going to see the hit's going to be right here. Could go down to a sixteenth note, but I don't need to get that detailed. Now when I'm down to an eighth note, this bar right here, when I have the snap to 16, a 128th is going to be 1 16th of an, of, um, of an eighth note. So I know that the sample is going to start exactly right here. And so let me see how much I can shorten this guy. Before it starts sounding a little unnatural. Cool. All right, so that's better. So we got that covered. All right, there's a lot of things to kind of work on here, but let's start working on the, the spikes, the edits. <laughs> And I'm going to group the kick and the bass here in low lows. And we're going to put a filter on here, auto filter. So bring this down to like 120. And we'll just go ahead and turn this on and off during the low cuts. So here we are, and here we are. All right, what I'm also going to do is because we need to figure out how to recreate this guy that swelling uh, verb. All right, we need to figure that out. So what I'm going to do is All right, so we're just going to get a reverb here and we're going to put it after the sidechain tools. And go ahead and just automate the dry wet. And we'll just automate the dry wet of the reverb.
Duplicate this base, and I'm going to put the MIDI back to where it was, but on this track right here, I'm going to have the octave playing, and that's going to be triggering a reverb. So it's going to be like this. So base um, edit. OK, so this base is going to be dry, and it's going to be still in the front of the mix going through the, the, uh, the high pass. But then I'm going to have this octave base triggering a 100% reverb. So let's get rid of this automation. All right, so that's doing it for now. What I'm going to have to do is probably bounce this to audio and then cut this off. So All right, now let's just get some white noise descending. So let's just go to massive. We'll get, I guess we'll try band pass for now. And turn off of the other oscillators. And we will go ahead and put in this note. Turn this guy all the way up. I don't know if we really need the release. Let's just put it on its default.
Alright, simple white noise, but I was trying to kind of do what they were doing, which is it seemed like there was a little bit of attack on the white noise. It's going pew, pew. So it seemed like there was a little attack. And so uh, what's going on here is that the amplitude envelope is uh, all the way up. Obviously, you want the white noise level, but then it stops right at the bar. And it's an OTB effect, which for me means over the bar effect. So it carries over into the next bar. Damn, that was loud. And so what I did is I increased the release just to let that carry over. And the filter movement is just being dictated by this macro. And so as you can see, it's just... moving down this modulation amount, which is not too much. Uh, another thing that I'm using this macro to modulate is, or automate, I guess, is the bandwidth. It starts really narrow and then kind of opens up. And also this macro is controlling the dry wet on the reverb. So it starts dry to get that attack and then it just slowly fades out into the back of the mix. So by itself, And then there's a dimension expander with a size all the way down. Actually, it sounds pretty good right there. Just wanted to open it up a little bit. All right, and that's pretty much it. It's just white noise with the color all the way up. And yeah, that's all that's going on. Oh, uh, yeah, to get that little pluck, I brought the, the filter down just a little bit. And then I applied this little attack to the filter so it starts high and then moves down really quickly. So if I take that off, it doesn't seem to be doing that much. Maybe it's not, but I thought it was cool. I'm going to leave it there and probably mess with it later, but. Just copy this across and let's copy this across and let's I think there's a filter that goes on with the base down here so we need a white noise to start right there Okay, so that seems just like bright noise um, with the color going down. So that's all I'm going to do there. So I'm going to call this down two, and we're going to just create a MIDI region. Come over to C3 and legato that shit. Also going to come back over to massive and we're going to put macro on the color, change this to white bright noise and go all the way down. And we're going to, I guess I didn't need to use a macro for it, but whatever, I might want to use, actually let's switch this. It'll make more sense to me. And so I might want to apply the macro to something else. Who knows? You never know. And let's just drag this guy down. Cool. And, and we'll turn off the oscillators. Let's see, 
it is a wide white noise. Let's also just take all the low end out and bring the amp envelope all the way up. And yep, you know what? Let's apply this macro to the amp envelope a little bit. Maybe we can put a bit crusher on. All right, and then next what I want to do is put the dimension expander on. Okay, cool, that works. And okay, cool. So that's that's working. And let's do white noise too. And then at the same time as that white noise occurs, there's also a the bass filters down. So let's Apply that. I don't know how much I'm gonna do, so so that starts right here. And then let's control the envelope amount. I like to just have absolute or just extreme, what's it called, um, automation points here because it's just really easy to just go all the way to the top and then control the modulation amount in massive. So I don't want it going all the way down like that. Base, massive, and call this uh, cutoff. Artifacts. So I'm going to actually modulate the or automate the dry wet. So. All right, so we kind of worked on this section right here, and 
There's lots of things that still need to be tweaked, but I really just want to keep moving forward. Let's get this build right, or at least close to there, like 70% of the way. And then we'll just start tweaking and making sure the whole thing sounds good. And then we'll move on to uh, everything else. So first thing I need to do is get these vocals right because the vocals change in the build. All right, so right now these vocals are just still doing what they're doing over here, but let's change that. All right. And then I'm gonna just delete this. Also going to get a new glitch plugin, and I'm going to initialize the patch. I'm going to do a tape stop right there. I'm going to slow the beats down a little. Bit. There we go. That's better. And then we're just going to turn that on. This guy. We're going to turn him on. Right here. So. Okay, so, so there's a little bit of like back and forth going. So it doesn't get too repetitive, but so we're gonna have this freak go out to some feedback, but after this shit, but then after this one, well, there's nothing after this one, it's just gonna drop. And let's also chop this guy off right here. That's kind of cool with a little glitch from Glitch. Let's copy this automation across. Okay. And this as well. All right, so now we need to start doing a snare roll and the uh, the pitched riser. I'm finding another crash because this one's a little too high. A little too high, it's a little too exciting. So... to get a clap impact and what I'm gonna do is resample 
the clap and just throw a reverb on it. some reverb Cool. And let's put this at the front. Let's get some saturator on there. Alright, now we need to get a snare roll and a do a little synth in the background there. Uh, but that's just going to be based off of the octave of the 303 bass. So what we're going to do is get a snare roll. And we also have to do a pitch up effect. So snare roll is just going to be 16th notes. So, 16th notes. Actually, that's not right, because we have to do it according to the... swing. Okay. Now to find the right snare, it's just going to be a 909 snare. All right, one of these guys should do. Let's Okay, so we've got that guy. Let's go ahead and uh, make the snare go a little bit faster over here. So what we're going to do is some 30-second notes. So let's go to 32. Now, there's not going to be any swing on these. But 
let's go ahead and uh, loop this. Okay, so snare roll, got that. And what we're also gonna do now is get that kind of um, pitched up version of our bass. So bass, let's duplicate the channel. And and what I'm gonna do is just move everything onto this B flat. And what I'm going to do is just get it out of the base. This is ostinato. Bring it down over here with its music friends. Get rid of the, what's it called, the little pitch uh, envelope. the voices Start via gate. And what we're going to do is put on the random here. So this is just inverting the um, the reverb. So whenever the pluck happens, it's almost like a side chain compressor. It's just going to take the reverb away during the pluck, but then bring it back um, at the end of the pluck.
Let's actually take this off, make sure they're fully wide. And next what we need to do is like that pitched up thing. So let's look for some kind of laser sound. So something like this. And what I'm gonna do is actually throw that into serum. So in serum, there it is, and let's do it on the beat. So bow, 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 bow. Actually, we just do this all the way across. And then we'll just modulate the LFO right here.
Um, I think there's a couple of things I need to take care of, like some white noise in here, but got to get ready for dinner. And this is a point where you're just fine tuning. And what fine tuning entails is listening over and over and over. And anytime that doesn't sound, something doesn't sound right to you, then you fix it, you change it. And then you listen again and you listen again and you keep listening and changing, listening and changing until it gets to the um, point that you want it to. And this is for sure the thing that takes uh, the most time other than arranging. I was able to cut down the time on arranging because we're using a reference track and structuring, uh, which can take an insane amount of time, but also just the fine tuning, making sure that it, just all the details are right, um, takes a ton of time. And uh, you can see why, again, because a lot of the time is going to be spent listening and then it's going to be changing something small and then listening again to see if that works. And then if it's not, if it doesn't work, you got to change it again, something small maybe. But um, just fine tuning everything. And then across the entire song, making sure that from the very beginning to the very end, the flow is right, it feels good, the, um, the little edits are effective, they lead back into... Um, the full sections, the drops really good, the breaks give a break, the builds actually build, the drops actually drop. And, um, and so that's so what I'm saying is I'm not going to uh, show this part just because I have no idea how long it's going to take. I'm not going to take too long with it though, just because uh, this is intended just for um, demonstration purposes on YouTube. But um, I'm going to try to get it somewhat right and then I'm gonna come back and show you the changes that I did make uh, but this is gonna kind of finish out the whole production stage and then I'm gonna get into mixing so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just start fine-tuning and I'll show you the changes that I made later all right so most of the changes that I made are in the climax when everything's kind of playing together I try to simplify it a little bit and make sure that it's not too confusing and I'll play that in a second and I also made some changes over here to the build section a lot of things were just slightly out of tune they weren't really fitting together and that's often going to be the case like especially if you're working off a reference track and you're trying to mimic an arrangement you're gonna pick things that are gonna to need to be treated differently of course and that should be the case you know because um, I'll give you the opportunity to make it, of course, your own. And here, let me start playing the old version. All right, now this is now, I guess, the new version. So to me, it's much cleaner. And so the first thing that I had to work on was the stutter effect. In the older version, it sounds like it just to me was out of tune. And so what I did is I um, loaded this into a uh, sampler, which doesn't make a difference, but uh, I was just messing around with the root key here root key here it does make a difference actually because in sampler I can control what the pitch bend range is and that was really important because I figured out that I wanted it to kind of bend down from like a sharp to G so from the third to the first and so that's that was important I needed to have that bend um, of going down a minor third and then same with this uh, this is also in sampler uh, going down a minor third so they're pitching down the same amount uh, just going down a third, a minor third. And uh, another thing that I did was uh, group them and then just apply this uh, weird kind of EQ thing, which is basically boosting all the G notes. So if I come over to the Mac, the map here, uh, the maximum here is the A sharps, and then they're all sliding down to the G's. So as you can see, Okay, and so this is kind of like my own way of, of doing more pitch bending by accenting the notes that are being bent going from the A sharp down to the G or the B flat down to the G. And so uh, that's all that this is doing. And I also removed one of these wubs. I removed the first wub. Uh, you can hear it in the uh, first verse. 
I didn't like the uh, melodic movement of the won't, won't. It's actually like going down and taking away the energy. And what I want to do is kind of just emphasize the uh, the little moan, the little Mona Lisa here. The ah. That's why I just kind of want it to swoop into that uh, that moan and then also the snare uh, fill. So, and I also really liked this. The little pre kind of uh, hit and so I wanted to bring that back in this one and so taking out that wub and taking out the vocal allowed me to bring in the uh, that little roll into the so that sounds a lot cleaner to me what I also did is I separated out the fill and and so this guy is now sitting on the right and I just EQ'd out some of the bottom, but it's also primarily an open hat that opens up on the right hand side. So what I did is I took this um, EQ and turned it into left right mode. And so on the right hand side, I am um, boosting 3K and up. And then on the left, on the right, on the left hand side, I mean, I'm taking out three uh, decibels at 3K. So it's really just accenting that, that open hat that's playing on the right. Okay, but, alright, let's, okay, so a little bit of mixing stuff, but uh, not too much. That cycles really well to me, so I'm very happy with that right now. And then, so the next thing I did was, I'll do the important stuff here. Let's see. First thing I did is I added a riser in here, just a long uh, riser, as you can see, long. And uh, the next thing I did was get this zip thing. It was really the effects that were screwing with me. And I got this zip thing more in tune. It was playing an F sharp, but now it's playing a G. And it's pitching up over the course of the entire sound uh, rather than just halfway through. Yeah, so those were the the changes I made. And I'm happy with them. So what that means is now that this cycles pretty well, I think it's really just a matter of mixing now. There might be a couple more things I want to add or take away uh, as a result of things not really mixing well together. Um, but like, I think it's a good point to move on. So now what it's a matter of is really just making sure that this builds up and then deconstructs well uh, over the course of the track.